Hey guys, this is Drama Gordo here, and today I'm going to go to a new dance studio. Just relax, I'm not going to dance, I'm going to be playing buckets. <laughs> Those of you that may have noticed, since I moved to South Korea, I've been playing a lot in dance studios. There's a specific dance studio near my place where I've been going and playing and filming videos there. Now, I'd like to play on the street more, <laughs> you know, go busking and get some cool videos there. However, I can't go busking that much at the moment, so I've been using a studio whenever I want to play buckets. Now, you may ask, why don't I just use a music studio? Well, music studios, the sound is very dead and there's no echo. And as I mentioned in my previous video, buckets sound better when there's a lot of echo a good like a reverb kind of sound. So the dance studio that I have been using near my place is not bad. Well, yeah, no, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's fine as a dance studio and I get a bit of echo, but there's a weird sound that happens in that studio, which just makes it a pain to try and record any audio. <laughs> It's like a doing, doing little sound like bouncing around the room or something. So today I'm going to try a studio that's a little bit further from my house, but still walkable distance. Hopefully I can get a better sound there. So let's get going. Now, upon arrival, it does look a lot bigger. The room is a lot bigger than my other studio. So here I am at another dance studio that I found in my house. And at first look, it kind of reminds me of short stay or love hotels um, that you find across Japan. Um, that kind of like lavishly over decorated in cheap plastic kind of vibe. If any of you are actually ever traveling in Japan, short stay hotels where they let you like stay for like three hours is actually pretty good if you have like a weird flight time, you know, you can go to one of those and sleep for a little bit and then go back to the airport and stuff. But more importantly, does this place sound better? So far there's no weird sounds going on. And it does sound like there's a little bit of echo, so it should be good. This place actually has padded roofs and then mirrors and stuff. So it's not as padded on the walls. That might be why it's got a decent amount of echo, but not the weird sound. I think the other place it was... I don't know how the sound was bouncing to make that weird sound, to be honest. But let's set up the buckets and have a go. Bucket number one.
Now, I know it may seem like I'm overly concerned with how the buckets sound. Oh, I need the echo and it needs to sound like this and all that but it does make a huge difference. I think the best way I can explain it is you're playing electric guitar and the guitar's not plugged in. So there's no amp and you're just trying to strum hard enough that it makes enough noise for people to hear. That's kind of what it feels like to play buckets with no echo when the sound is dead. Um, it's really tiring. The same way with a guitar, if you're used to playing with effects and pedals, and trying out different sounds, that obviously gives you more room to breathe musically and you can do a lot of different ideas. Obviously, it's not exactly the same with the buckets because they're still just buckets, but if you have a good sound and some good echo, I can actually get some good ideas for beats and they sound and feel good while I'm playing them. But in the same way when you play guitar, if you have a good sound to work with, you get more ideas to play and it feels good playing. It's the same with the buckets. Um, sometimes if I'm playing in a place where the buckets are just dead, it's hard to come up with new ideas because nothing kind of sounds that good. So it's kind of, I, I don't know, I just don't think of new ideas musically <laughs> at all. Like, I don't want to try any new rhythms because none of them sound good. But as soon as you, I sit into a place where it's got good sound, good reverberance, you know, it's, all these ideas start coming, it's strange. But that's the best way I can explain it, I think. Now, for those of you that are interested in how I mic my buckets, uh, recently I've been using the Zoom H6. Uh, it's just an easy portable uh, recorder. Uh, it's got the two condenser mics at the front, and then you can put in lots of mics, but I only use one extra mic, um, which sometimes I don't even need. I think this is, what is it, AKG D5. Uh, there's no particular reason I'm using this mic. It was just, I don't know, it's just what I've got at the moment. Um, just to try and get a bit more bass out of the buckets or at least give me the option to add bass later on or to, you know, a bit more options if, if the sound doesn't come out quite that good. And then what I'll have, somewhere else in the room, I'll have like a phone. This is an old phone. Um, and I'll just record audio on this as well because the way phones compress audio can actually sound pretty cool, the way they compress the echo and stuff. That said, if the buckets sound good and have lots of echo, literally the audio from the phone, even the phone I'm holding right now, will be great. You don't specifically need really good mics or anything. You just need the room to sound good. And then yeah, even on the phone, it'll sound cool.
Just one really random thing. I just find it weird how like on phones, it'll say high quality and then you start recording and it'll say like recording in high quality audio and it's like, well, no, the mic in this phone is not high quality. Yes, sometimes the way it compresses audio is pretty cool and it works well for buckets, but it's not a high quality thing. <laughs> the microphones in phones, it just seems so weird to me. Like you buy a, an expensive microphone, a couple of hundred dollars and it won't say high quality on it. You know, it'll just be a good microphone. But when you have these really cheap, tiny microphones that they have to put in the phones, they will like take the time to say it's high quality. I don't know. <laughs>